We're reading through the Bible in one year. August 15th, 1 Samuel chapters 5 through 6, Romans 5, Jeremiah 43, and Psalm 19. Now, the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it to the house of Dagon, their god, and set it by Dagon, their idol. Then the Ashdodites rose early the next morning, and behold, Dagon had fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of Yahweh. So they took Dagon and set him in his place again. Yes, he's not a god, and he can't do this on his own. But they arose early the next morning, and behold, Dagon had fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of Yahweh, and the head of Dagon, and both the palms of his hands were cut off on the threshold. Only the trunk of Dagon was left to him. Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon nor all who enter Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. Now, the hand of Yahweh was glorious against the Ashdodites, and he made them desolate and struck them with tumors, and, and uh, both Ashdod and its territories. Thus the men of Ashdod saw that it was so and said, The ark of the God of Israel must not remain with us. For his hand is severe on us and on Dagon, our God. So they sent and gathered all the lords of the Philistines to them and said, Well, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they said, Let the ark of the God of Israel be brought around to Gath. And they brought the ark of God, rather the ark of the God of Israel around. Now it happened after they had brought it around that the hand of Yahweh was against the city with very great confusion. And he struck the men of the city, both young and old, so that tumors broke out on them. Then they sent the ark of God to Ekron. And as the ark of God came to Ekron, the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought the ark of the God of Israel around to us, to put us and our people to death. They sent, therefore, and gathered all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it return to its own place so that it will not put us and our people to death. For there was a deadly confusion throughout the city. The hand of God was very glorious there. Now the men who did not die were struck with tumors, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. Now, the ark of Yahweh had been in the fields of the Philistines seven months. And the Philistines called for the priests and the diviner, saying, What shall we do with the ark of Yahweh? Make us know how we shall send it to its place. So they said, If you send away the ark of the God of Israel, do not send it empty, but you shall surely return to him a guilt offering. Then you will be healed, and it will be known to you why his hand is not turned away from you. And they said, well, What shall be the guilt offering which we shall return to him? And they said, Five golden tumors and five golden mice, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines, for one plague was on all of you and on your lords. So you shall make likenesses of your tumors and likenesses of, of your mice that, that, that bring the land to ruin. And you shall give glory to the God of Israel. Perhaps he will ease his hand from you, your gods and your land. Why then do you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts? When he had abused them, did they not allow the people to go? And they went. So now, take and make a new cart and two milch cows on which there had never been a, a yoke, and hitch the cows to the cart and take their calves home away from them. And take the ark of Yahweh and place it on the cart, and put the articles of gold which you return to him as a guilt offering in a box by its side, and then send it away that it may go. See? If it goes up by, uh, by the way of its own territory to Beth Shemesh, then he has done us this great evil. But if not, then we will know that it was not his hand that smote us. It happened to us by chance. Then the men did so, and took two milch cows, and, and hitched them to the, cart, rather, to the cart, and shut up their calves at home. And they put the ark of Yahweh on the cart, as well as the box of the golden mice and the likenesses of their tumors. That had to be gross. And the, uh, and rather, and the cows took straight away in the direction, rather, and the cows took the straight way in the direction of Beth Shemesh, and they went along the highway, lowing as they went, 
and did not turn aside to the right or to the left. And the lords of the Philistines went after them to the border of Beth Shemesh. Now, the people of Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley. When they raised their eyes and saw the ark of God, they were glad to see it. And the cart came into the field of Joshua, the Beth, uh, sorry, Joshua the Beth Shemeshite, and stood there, and a large stone was there. And they split the wood of the cart and offered the cows as a burnt offering to Yahweh. And the Levites took down the ark of Yahweh and the box that was with it, in which were the articles of gold, and put them on the large stone. And the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and sacrificed sacrifices that day to Yahweh. So the five lords of the Philistines saw it and returned to Ekron that day. Now, these are the golden tumors which the Philistines returned for a guilt offering to Yahweh, one for Ashdod, one for Gaza, one for Ashkelon, one for Gath, and one for Ekron. And the golden mice, according to the number of all the cities of the Philistines, belonging to the five lords, both of fortified cities and of country villages. And the large stone on which they set the ark of Yahweh is a witness to this day in the field of Joshua, the Beth Shemeshite. Then he struck down some of the men of Beth Shemesh, because they had looked into the ark of Yahweh. And he struck down of all the people, 50,070 men. And the people mourned because Yahweh had struck the people with a great slaughter. And the men of Beth Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before Yahweh, this holy God? And to whom shall he go from us? Rather, to whom shall he go up from us? So they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kiriath Jerim, saying, The Philistines have brought back the ark of Yahweh. Come down and take it up to you. Let's move on now to Romans chapter 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also boast in our afflictions, knowing that affliction brings about perseverance, and perseverance proven character, and proven character hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For if... While we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, or reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only this, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, And so, death spread to all men because all sinned. For until the law, uh, sin, sorry, for until the law, and Moses, uh, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses, even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the, the trespass of Adam, who was a type of him who was to come. But the gracious gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression one of the many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to the many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For on the one hand, the judgment arose from one transgression, resulting in condemnation. But on the other hand, the gracious gift arose from many transgressions, resulting in justification. For if by the transgression of the one death reigned through the the one, 
much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. So then, as through one transgression there resulted condemnation to all men, even so, through one act of righteousness, there resulted justification of life to all men. For as though, rather, for as through uh, the one man's disobedience, the many were appointed sinners, even so the obedience of the one, of, rather, the obedience of the one, the many will be appointed righteous. Now, the law came in so that transgression would increase, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's all the notes to hear. Let's move on now to Jeremiah 43. But it happened that as soon as Jeremiah, whom Yahweh their God had sent, had finished speaking to all the people, all the words of Yahweh their God, that is, all these words, Azariah, the son of Hoshiah, and Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the arrogant men said to Jeremiah, You are speaking a lie. Yahweh our God has not sent you to say, You are not to enter Egypt to sojourn there. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, is inciting you against us uh, to give us power, uh, to, to give us over to the uh, hand of the Chaldeans. So they will put us to death or exile us to Babylon. Again, we talked about it yesterday. He had said, if you would just walk in faith according to what I say, things will go well for you. Instead, they choose to rebel again. So Jehan and the son of Korea and all the commanders of the military forces and all the people did not listen to the voice of Yahweh to stay in the land of Judah. But Johanan, the son of Korea and all the commanders of the military forces took the entire remnant of Judah who had returned from all the nations to which they had been banished in order to sojourn in the land of Judah. The men, the women, the little ones, the, the, the king's daughters, and every person that Nebuzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, and the grandson of, Shef, of Shaphan, together with Jeremiah the prophet and Baruch, the son of Neriah. And they entered the land of Egypt, for they did not listen to the voice of Yahweh. They went as far as Topanes. Then the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah and Topanes, saying, Take some large stones in your hands and hide them in the mortar in the brick terrace, which is at the entrance of Pharaoh's house in Topanes, in the sight of some of the Jews. And you will say to them, Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I am going to send and get Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I am going to set his throne right over these stones that I have hidden and he will spread his canopy over them. And he will also come and strike the land of Egypt. Those who are meant for death will be given over to death, those for captivity to captivity, and those for the sword to the sword. And I shall set fire to the houses of the gods of Egypt, and he will burn them and take them captive. So he will wrap himself with the land of Egypt as a shepherd wraps himself with his garment, and he will depart from there safely. And he will also shatter the sacred pil uh, pillars of Heliopolis, which is in the land of Egypt. In the houses of the gods of Egypt, he will burn with fire. Let's conclude today in Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out throughout all the earth, and their utterances to the end of the world. In them he has placed a tent for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out from his chamber. It rejoices as a strong man to run its course. Its rising is from one end of the heavens, and its circuit 
to the other end of them, and there is nothing hidden from his heat, rather from its heat. The law of Yahweh is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true. They are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold, even more than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your slave is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Acquit me of hidden faults. Also, keep back your slave from presumptuous sins. Let them not rule over me. Make sure we don't lose our notes here. There we go. Also, keep back your slave from presumptuous sins. Let them not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, and I shall be acquitted of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Yahweh, my rock and my redeemer. That's it. That's all of the text and also all of the reading for today. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.